Hey everyone, thanks for being here and checking out the channel. Tonight, we are traveling together to a haunted house that only we will get to see. If you like the video, please remember to hit the like button. And if you subscribe, leave a comment below. I reply to every comment personally. As I stood there, holding onto the half-cracking tree trunk and praying for my life that it wouldn't give. I kept my eyes on the roof of the house, half broken with a hole in the middle and what looked like a dozen bodies broken. All I could wish for is that I didn't end up like them. I lived in Ketchum, Idaho, when I was a kid. Back then, it wasn't the popular ski and hiking trails town you might have heard of these days. In the 80s, the town was always really quiet, which is probably what led to what happened. I was an adventurous, energetic kid who loved to go out with my friends, sliding down the mountain in the winter and finding new areas in the woods to build tree houses or huts in. Only that year, somehow, people had started to go missing. For me and my friends, though, it only started to matter when Billy, one of our group of four, disappeared without a trace. Billy wasn't his real name. We only called him that because it was his favorite TV character. But his name was George, and he was a funny kid. He had cerebral palsy, which back then, as cruel as it is, would usually only get kids bullied. But the thing with him was he was so funny and ruthless with his humor that no one dared mess with him, or their secret dino pajamas would be their downfall. First, Billy went missing. Then, Harry and Ben's parents, the other two kids in my close group of friends, forbade them from going out, and I was the only one left. Most of the time, my parents were so distracted with work that even though they told me not to go outside, they would barely notice if I did. All I had to do was tell them I was going out to meet Ben or Harry or sleep over at their house for the night, and they wouldn't notice me coming and going. This seems like a stupid thing to mention here, but stay with me. Back then, National Geographic was making a big impact in my group of friends. And while the others wanted to go and be explorers, I wanted to be the one taking the pictures of the explorers. Because of this, my choice of wardrobe had one piece no other kids carried around at the time. One night, when my parents were asleep, I stole one of my mom's purses, the largest she had. I hid it away in a hole at the town's entrance, and every time we went to the mountains to pass the time during the summer, I would dig it out and pretend I was a renowned photographer with my trusty bag. Unbelievably, that bag allowed this story to get to you. As always, the day before, I had asked Harry and Ben if they wanted to go out in the morning and go hiking in the mountains. We'd do that for fun most of the summer holiday days, but because of Billy's situation, they said their parents wouldn't allow them. That meant I would either be by myself at home, bored to no end, or that I would have to lie to my parents about where I would be for the day. They never really checked on me, so I chose the latter. The morning after, I had breakfast and waited until my dad left for work. Then I told my mom that I would be going to Harry's house for the day, and that I would be back just before dinner, and left to the rhythm of her shrugging. The adventure was on. As usual, I left and walked towards the mountains, with the idea of picking up my photography bag on the way there and hiking all the way to the top to pretend to take some pictures of the scenic view. I did just that, but when I finally got to the top, I decided to go further in the mountains into what was surely, in the mind of a kid, unexplored territory. I went over two different valleys and two different hills I hadn't seen before, 
and stopped for a little bit just before going down the other end of the second hill. I was pretending to snap a picture when my left foot slipped and sent me tumbling and sliding down the side of the hill. I tried stopping it and holding on to something as much as I could, but I was in full freefall and all I could do was close my eyes and try to avoid as much pain as possible and hope for the best. Suddenly, I felt a punch on my chest and belly. My legs, arms and neck slingshotting forward while the rest of my body was held back by my mum's purse's strap. I opened my eyes only to see nothing underneath me but a small cliff with a strange dark wood hut at the bottom. When I saw it, I jerked the strap and tried to get myself back up through the tree that was holding me up. It felt like a drama or horror from these days. As I tried to reach up and grab onto the tree carefully, I heard it crack. At first a little bit, then more and more until it gave and dropped me further down, until it was upside down. The upside facing me and the abyss and giving in to the pressure a little more every second until there was a final crack. I remember feeling like I was dead. That was it for me. I closed my eyes and screamed a scream that didn't sound like it was coming from me. I felt the air rush past me for some seconds, then turn muffled and I crashed into a slightly soft surface a jolt of pain shooting from my foot up into my spine. I screamed out of pure pain, and when I opened my eyes, to my surprise, I was in a completely different environment. I didn't worry about it that much for too long, because it was too dark to see anything properly, and my ankle was now pulsating painfully. When I looked, I could see it swelling, and turning into a darker collar before my eyes. I wrapped it with both my hands, took a look at the bag, which was now just an open line, the strap completely ripped. When my eyes turned back to my ankle, I couldn't contain the loudest scream I remember ever bellowing out. In the space between my bent legs, a horrified face with broken glasses, eyes wide open, and the head half caved in was staring up at the sky. I pushed myself away from the body as fast as I could, dragging my legs all the way until my back hit a wall. I couldn't look at the corpse, and somehow I also couldn't look away, because I had noticed there was more. On top of the body I saw first, there were more bodies, and more even underneath it. As I sat there and managed to control my breathing while my eyes adjusted, I could see different familiar faces lying there amongst the other ones, different missing people. I managed to pull myself together after a while and ward off the shock and the fear and started looking around the place for a way out. Looking around, it looked like I had fallen into an old house that had been abandoned. There was no light or even wiring. All I had was a hole broken in the ceiling and the light from outside that was slowly fading away. The room I was in looked like a small open plan living room. There was a small fireplace I could see the frame for, and the chair on the other side of the room and what seemed like windows over a very old sink, but they were completely covered. Behind me, there was a door with some glass squares, but all of it was covered as well. I stood up, and that's when I thought I heard a small voice somewhere in the house. I looked around only to find the frame for a door I hadn't noticed before. I tried to open it and had to kick it with difficulty a few times to get it open, but when I did, I don't know how to describe what I saw. There were tens, 
maybe hundreds of different symbols spread all around the room in what looked like fresh black paint, and I couldn't understand any of them back then. What I knew then was that it wasn't a good thing. It made me feel afraid and panicked, and like I wanted to get out of there immediately. Now, having researched it, I know there were markings for summoning rituals, but who would have made them? As I observed it, a shadow caught my eye in the corner of the room. I tried to cover my eyes from the light coming through the hole in the ceiling to have a better look, but the more I did, the more horrifying this thing looked. I couldn't see a face, but I could see a dark silhouette with long legs and a torso that followed the walls and ceiling to tower over me. I could feel eyes on me, even though it didn't seem to have any. I stumbled out of the room, my heart beating out of my chest and started screaming up the house's roof for help while I felt the floor trembling behind me, the whispers growing by the second. It was like the entire house was coming alive around me, and I couldn't see anything but normal wood and a pile of dead bodies in the middle of the room. I realized then that every dead person there had fallen into the hole just like me, but everyone must have landed on their heads. Every body I could see had a head that was caved in. My bag saved me from that fate. As I stood there and realized this, something picked me up and pushed me against the far wall. The shape was coming closer and taking form into what today I can only describe as the devil himself, and all I could do was scream for my life. Around him, shapes of people were forming, each uglier than the next with open wounds showing and wide smiles that haunt my nightmares to this day. I wanted to run, but there was nowhere to go. I started feeling pressure all around my body, like something was squeezing me until I popped. The pressure got more and more intense, and it was when I finally let out a scream and was starting to hurt all over, that all the pressure seemed to push open a small hole in the wall behind me, and I fell through. I slid for what seemed like the longest time. Finally. The bottom of my back hit something hard, shooting pain spreading through the rest of my back. I grabbed onto it and rolled over in pain. From what I could see, I was still inside the house, maybe in a basement. I was too afraid to move and for a while just sat there, hugging my knees and crying on the floor holding my mum's bag tight between my fingers. Hours of quiet went by. I seemed to be able to hear the same whispers coming from above me, but for some reason they just wouldn't come around me now, staying at a distance. When I finally turned around and saw a small light, I noticed it. The first thing was that the walls were rockier than where I was before. I was inside a cave. A small ball of light was shining smooth, weak light over me and the walls and something else that was on the floor in front of me. I approached it and touched it, but this time I didn't scream. Inside the cave, in front of me, a single body lay, and when I turned it, I took a deep breath to contain tears. Billy's body was in there, all alone, in the dark and cold, and right above him, this small ball of light that was now starting to move away. That had to be Billy. There was something different about it. As it went away, I decided to follow and leave Billy's body behind. 
It was early next morning when I finally climbed out of the cave, the entrance spawning from under hundreds of bushes. It would have been completely impossible to see it, even as the dusk's light shone on it. When I finally got out and turned around to see where I was, I could see the small, dark wood house in the distance, under the mountain's shade. I could see the small, broken tree hanging from the tip of the cliff that me and tens of others had fallen down from. I thought how lucky I was that the small tree was there. As I sit here now, I know exactly how I survived. A light whisper built up and Billy appeared like smoke in front of me. He waved goodbye, and as I waved back, a loud crack echoed through the valley, and all the side of the mountain where the tree was hanging fell into the hole, burying the entire house and all the bodies with it. I've waited to tell the families about this for a long time, but I never thought anyone would believe me. The house was consuming their family members and had tried to consume me. As my biggest stroke of luck, Billy was strong enough to get his soul out and was there to save me when I needed him. I'm still convinced today that the small tree was Billy's and that he placed it there knowing one day it would save someone. That someone was me and today I know that I found and was almost taken by the most haunted house in America, the one that no one alive has seen and that no one alive will ever see. I still have my mum's bag safe and I still have the memory of Billy's crooked smile imprinted in my brain. I will remember him until the day I die. Thank you for being here and watching the full video. I hope you enjoyed the story and the narration. If you did, be sure to spook the like button. And if you subscribe to the channel, please comment below. I answer all the comments personally.